Hello everyone, my name is Karthik Vijay Raghavan and I'm a Document DB Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. Amazon Document DB is a fast, scalable, fully managed and MongoDB compatible database service. In today's session, I'm going to show you how you can create a Document DB cluster using the AWS Management Console. So let's get started. I'm here at the AWS Management Console and I'm in the search bar looking for document db and i'm going to select the first uh, result from the search here and i'm at the document db console i don't have any clusters created as of yet so let's go ahead and create the first cluster so i'm i'm going to click on this orange button called create and uh, i'm going to give a uh, few input fields here the first one is the cluster identifier which is just a unique name to this cluster Let's call this a demo cluster. I'll leave the engine version at its default of 4.0. The other option is 3.6, which is the older version of the Document DB engine. Engine version 4.0 is compatible with MongoDB 4.0, and you can perform asset transactions and other 4.0 features with this version. The instance class, uh, you, can, you can choose a wide range of options from R5 large, which is two vCPUs and 16 GB RAM, all the way up to R524X large, which is 96 vCPUs and 768 GB RAM. For development and testing purposes, you know you can also select T3 medium, which is the smallest instance you can run Document DB on, uh, which is two vCPU and four GB RAM, and this gives you a good opportunity to save cost in load environment. So for the purpose of this demo, I'll just choose R5 large. Uh, and I'll start with three instances. This is a recommended practice because with three instances uh, in a cluster, you get four nines of availability or 99.99% .99 of availability. So I'll go with that. And then I, I'll give the master uh, username. So I'm gonna call this master user as an administrator and I'll give a secured password. And that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to, you know, the, the minimum set of fields required to create a cluster. Uh, but more often than not, our customers, uh, you know, use this advanced settings to, you know, change things like, uh, you know, which VPC should this uh, document DB cluster be running in, right? So let's go and look at those advanced settings. So the first one is VPC. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, create this cluster in a data VPC. And this is very common because you would want, you know, your databases and data tier to be running in, in its own VPC. So I'll choose the data VPC, which I have pre-created. And, uh, and I have a subnet group called document DB or doc DB subnet, as this indicates here. And uh, this is basically a collection of subnets within the VPC and uh, subnet group is your way to tell document DB, hey, create my instances. In this case, the three instances that we chose earlier, create these instances in a, you know, in a specific set of availability zones, right? And I'll show you uh, what the subnet group contains. It basically contains three availability zones so that my three instances can be distributed across those three availability zones. And then security group, uh, to limit surface area of attack to document DB, it's highly recommended that you create a security group and allow only specific application servers to access document DB. So I have pre-created a security group called DocDB inbound, and I'll walk you through this uh, in, in one of the videos here. So let's go ahead and select it. All that this security group does is allow, allow inbound uh, traffic to document DB over port TCP, uh, uh, using TCP protocol over port 27017 and only for a specific set of application servers. So again, that is another best practice to follow so that you can limit a surface area of attack and uh, you know have only known set of application servers talk to document DB. And then moving on here with the cluster options, uh, we have this port, you can leave it at default as 27017 and cluster parameter group. So you can uh, you know, create your own cluster parameter group or use the default one. I, I have not created any yet, so I'll leave uh, the default parameter group as the option here. If you want to change things like, you know, if you want to enable audit log or enable profiler log, then you'll have to create a new cluster parameter group and explicitly enable those. And then you can come and assign that uh, to this cluster. You can do this anytime. 
uh, encryption at rest by default you know security best practices are, are you know enabled in document db so encryption at rest is enabled and document db being a native aws service integrates with aws key management service or kms and uh, you know you can use uh, the 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 key provided by uh, amazon or you can bring your own key uh, and you can you know uh, using key management service you know you can basically leverage all the features that it provides like key rotations and other stuff for this demo i'm just going to use uh, amazon provided key uh, which is which is automatically selected for me and then backup uh, backups are, are again automatically enabled in document db and the minimum retention period uh, is one day you cannot disable backup in document db because we strongly believe that database should be backed up uh, you can uh, choose a backup retention period greater than one day and you can go all the way up to 35 days and this is gonna strictly depend upon what your recovery point objective or rpo is let's say your rpo is 30 days you would select the backup retention period to be 30 days. And what this allows you to do is perform a point in time recovery uh, to up to 30 days, uh, you know, backwards, right? So from the current time minus five minutes, it takes about five minutes for the logs to be replicated to the storage layer. Uh, but from the current time minus five minutes, all the way up to 30 days is what you can do a, you know, point in time recovery of your data. And you can choose a backup uh, window. This is the time when those automated snapshots will be created by document DB. So I'll just say that, you know, uh, create those automated snapshots at 11 a, uh, p.m. Uh, every day or every night. And again, this is just, you know, for document DB to, uh, you know, manage those incremental, uh, you know, data changes. Uh, but you can still, even without an automated snapshot, you can perform point-in-time recovery. So this has no dependency on point-in-time recovery. And then if, if you enable audit log uh, and profiler log, you can also publish them to uh, you know CloudWatch uh, so that you can monitor them over there. I'm gonna leave the default, which is uh, you know, not, not sending them to CloudWatch for now. Uh, Document DB is a fully managed service and you can choose a maintenance window. Uh, basically, you can say, hey, I want to perform a document DB to perform maintenance operations around like, let's say, 2 a.m. UTC where nobody is using my system or it has very minimal load. And, uh, you know, this this says 30 minutes or half an hour over here. Uh, keep in mind that it's, it's the, the main, this is the total maintenance window. Document DB's availability, uh, you know, is going to be like, you know, there's going to be a minor outage, but let's say about 30 seconds or so when the primary instance fail o fails over. Uh, it doesn't mean that document DB is not available for you for this entire 30 minutes. And also, uh, you know, when it comes to creating tags, it's a good practice to create tags. You can add a tag called environment here and say dev. So down the line, you can use cost allocation tagging and you can say, hey, which tag uh, belongs to which environment and how, man, how much you know e each of these environments are costing me. So you can do those kind of uh, budgeting and expense tracking uh, effort later. And then lastly, deletion protection is enabled by default. This is to ensure that you don't accidentally delete your cluster. And uh, you know you can you can for sure disable this. Uh, but best practice is to leave it enabled so that when, when you're trying to delete individual instances, you'll be able to do so. But at the very end, if you're trying to delete the last instance, you'll get an error message saying that, hey, you should, you should disable deletion protection. So you'll know that you're not accidentally deleting a cluster. So I'm going to leave it checked, which is the best practice, and go and say create cluster. So this process is going to take about uh, 8 to uh, 10 minutes. Uh, for the cluster uh, to be created with all these three instances uh, and for the document DB uh, cluster to be fully available to you to start, you know, performing our CRUD operations, scale operations and all that stuff. So we'll come back to this in a different video to take a look at, you know, what this cluster looks like and uh, perform some scale operations.